Welcome! Each year, many different groups do an analysis of the previous year's climate. The results from most of those analyses are currently in, and so this video summarizes those results. Given that these are done using different data, different analysis techniques by different people that are independent of one another, I think you'll find it remarkably surprising how consistent they are with one another. There's often a great deal of confusion between average temperature and average temperature anomaly. Let's deal with average temperature first. Let's assume we have three thermometers trying to measure the same temperature. Thermometer A registers 20 degrees centigrade, thermometer B registers 22 degrees centigrade, and thermometer C registers 26 degrees centigrade. Now we have no way a priori of knowing which of these thermometers is correct. In fact, none of them may be. So the best thing we can do in science is to take an average, and the average of these three readings is 23 degrees centigrade. But because there's such a large change in uh, the uh, temperature between the three th thermometers, that there's a large uncertainty introduced. And we can do that by calculating the standard deviation. And in this case, the standard deviation of these three results is 1.5 degrees centigrade. So you would say that the average temperature is 23 degrees plus or minus 1.5 degrees centigrade. But that is only gives us a 50-50 chance of the real result being within that range. So most scientists take two standard deviations at least uh, as their standard. So our result here would be 23 degrees plus or minus 3 degrees centigrade. And we would have a 95% chance of the real temperature being within that range. But what happens the next day when the temperature is changed? We'll get the same sort of range of measurements and we'd have the same sort of uncertainty. So the uncertainty in the warming would be just as large. That's why we appeal to a temperature anomaly. In this case, we take the three thermometers and they've all say increased by one degree centigrade. So the average temperature anomaly is going to be one degree centigrade and the standard deviation is going to be zero. So we'd be very, very certain under these circumstances that the temperature has warmed since yesterday by one degree centigrade. And why is this more accurate? Because we're taking out the difference in the, the thermometers. We're comparing A only with A, B only with B, and C only with C to get the temperature anomaly, whereas we're having to combine the, the temperatures for the average temperature. So temperature anomaly is very, very much more accurate than uh, the average temperature. Here is a map of the global temperatures. White is cold, red is hot. And you can see there's a great deal of structure and of course this is changing continuously. So it's very difficult to get an average temperature from something like this. So what we do, let's go to temperature anomaly. Here they've taken a reference period, in this case 1981 to 2010, and compared the temperatures in 2017 with that period. And you can see that if it's slightly below average temperatures it's going to appear blue. And if it's a slightly above average, it's going to appear red. Now this is very useful and uh, fairly accurate, but it doesn't tell you how significant those changes are. So there's another type of map which I often like to use, which is the percentiles map, which shows the significance of those temperature changes. Here, deep red is record warm and deep blue is record cold. And on this map, you can see that every pixel on the globe is either near average or above average temperatures, which is why 2017 is a, was a really warm year. Here are the results from the six main uh, analysis groups uh, worldwide. There's Berkeley Earth, NOAA, NASA, the UK Met Office, the Japanese Met Office, and the World Meteorological Organization. Now, as I said, the analyses techniques are different and one of the differences is the reference period. You'll notice that Berkeley Earth uses 1951 to 1980, NOAA uses 1901 to 2000, i.e. the 20th century average, and the uh, Japanese Met and World Meteorological Organization used 1981 to 2010. And this accounts for the differences in the anomaly shown here in the second column. you notice that the, the later uh, ones like the Japanese Met and World Meteorological Organization using much later period for their reference include a lot more of the recent global warming so their anomaly is lower than some of the earlier ones. When they come to rank them against other years they find that 2017 is either the second or the third warmest year. Well to find out how consistent they are with one another we have to reduce them all to the same reference period and we've done this here 
compared to the 1981 to 2010 period used by the World Meteorological Organization. And when you do that, all the results from these various analyses come into line with one another and you'll notice for the last 40 or 50 years they are almost identical with one another. Even going back to the historical data they're pretty good within 0.1 or 0.2 of each other. So this really says that the analysis is solid. One thing that can mess up the results is the presence or absence of uh, El Nino or La Nina uh, period. El Nino is a warming of the Eastern Pacific, La Nina is a cooling of the Eastern Pacific. And they're shown here in different colors. Blue is La Nina, red is El Nino, gray is neutral. So let's take a look at the El Nino years first. And I'm going to put a little red triangle at the peak of each one of those and draw a line through them, uh, fit a line through them. And you can see that there's a fairly consistent warming trend through each one of those years. Now let's remove the triangle, but leave the line there and put uh, blue circles for the peaks of the La Nina years. Again, you could take the exact parallel line, fit that through those points fairly well and uh, have uh, a warming. So both phenomena are showing a general warming trend that is very similar to one another. They're just offset in temperature. So if you have an extended La Nina or an extended uh, El Nino, you can fool yourself into believing that uh, there's been either a very strong upturn or a very strong downturn in temperatures. But 2017 is a neutral year and you'll notice that it is the warmest neutral year of all by quite a long way, by about 0.2 degrees centigrade. Well, some people will say, hey, what about the satellite temperatures? We've only been dealing with surface temperatures at the moment. That is the temperature of the land and the ocean. The troposphere is the atmosphere re reaching up to about 20 kilometers or so. And then there's a stratosphere above that, which goes up to about 50 kilometers. And if you look at the plot on the left, you'll see that initially temp air temperatures drop as you go higher in the atmosphere, which we all know. But when you get to the stratosphere, they start to warm up again. So what's going on with the stratosphere? Well, that's worn from two sources, one from the sun above and two from infrared radi radiation coming from below. And that's a very important point, which we'll deal with in a little while. So let's take a look at the results from the two uh, organizations that uh, do this analysis for the uh, satellite data. One is UAH and the other one is RSS. First, let's take a look at the lower troposphere, which is between two and four kilometers up. Both pretty much agree that the anomaly for 2017 is about 0.37 degrees centigrade. That gives a trend for their data of 0.13 degrees centigrade and 0.14 degrees centigrade respectively. Now that compares with the surface warming rate of 0.17 degrees centigrade per decade, which is slightly higher. And you'd expect that because the measurement here is being done much higher in the atmosphere where it's cooler. Now both uh, again pretty much agree with the surface data that this is the third and fourth warmest uh, uh, year on record. Let's go to the middle troposphere. That's between four and 10 kilometers with an average of about six kilometers. And again, both groups agree at about 0.3 degrees centigrade for the anomaly and have a warming rate of about 0.1 degrees centigrade per decade. Now that uh, is again lower, as again you would expect from it being higher in the atmosphere and both rank 2017 as the fourth warmest. Now let's go with the stratosphere. They don't agree quite so well here, but it's uh, about minus 0.35 uh, degrees centigrade cooling uh, for the anomaly for 2017 with a cooling rate of about 0.25 degrees centigrade per decade. And they rank 2017 as the fifth and ninth coolest respectively. Now what's going on with the stratosphere? The stratosphere can be worn from both above and below. And so for it to be cooling, one of those two uh, quantities must be reducing. So we know that the sun has not changed its intensity particularly or at least significantly. Uh, so it must be less radiation coming up from below. And that's the exact prediction that was made by the anthropogenic global warming theory. And it's unique to that theory. No other theory can explain stratospheric cooling. Did 2017 show a warming trend or a cooling trend? One way of uh, estimating this is to look at the relative number of high temperature records compared with the number of low temperature records. 
If there are more low temperature records than high temperature records, we probably had a cooling trend. If there are more high temperature records than low temperature records, we probably had a warming trend. So how many low temperature records did we have in 2017? Worldwide we had 39,292. That seems like a very large number, but not when compared to the number of high temperature records we set, which was 110,415. That's a ratio of nearly 3 to 1. So that says we have a very strong warming trend. Now how does this ratio compare with the past? Here is the uh, decadal average uh, since the 1920s and you can see we had relatively modest differences up until about the 1980s. But in the 1990s and the 2000s we've had a, a very lopsided um, a number of high temperature records. Uh, and 2010, 2015 is looking, for, at least at the moment, rather similar to the 2000s. However, if you put 2017 on the same scale, that's up there, and you'd have a similar uh, bar for 2016. NOAA lists significant climate events for each year, and in 2017 they listed 19 specific global climate issues. 11 were associated with record or near record high temperatures, none with lows. Three were associated with torrential rains in Asia. Three were associated with hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin. It was an average to above average storm season with 83 major storms, 41 hurricanes, typhoons and cyclones, which are basically all the same thing, just depending on where they occur in, in the globe. No picture of climate will be complete without checking uh, the situation with the ice at the two poles. If we look at the Arctic sea ice extent, we see that it was well below average. Average here is shown by the uh, black line. The dark red line is 2017 throughout the year. In fact, for most of the year, it was rivaling 2016, which was the uh, uh, lowest sea ice extent on record. And in fact, it ended the year with a lower sea ice extent than 2016. The Antarctic ice situation was very similar. It was well below average. Again, the average is the black line. The dark red line is 2017. It was at record low levels for nearly half the year and ended the year as the second lowest sea ice extent on record. The NASA GRACE mission using gravity attraction measures the amount of ice in the two ice caps. And both are losing ice. The Greenland ice cap is losing about 4,000 gigatons in the last 15 years, which amounts to 270 cubic kilometers of ice per year. In the Antarctic, there's less at loss. It's about 1,700 gigatons in the last 15 years, which amounts to 113 cubic kilometers of ice per year. So anyone that's telling you that the ice caps are growing is talking nonsense. Well, I asked the question, can there be any doubt anymore? Carbon dioxide is continuing to rise. We may well get above 410 parts per million this year for the first time in several million years. Well, the answer to my question is no, there's no doubt at all. If you look at the chart on the right hand side here, you'll see the 10 warmest years uh, ranked in order with the year of uh, the anomaly, uh, both in centigrade and Fahrenheit. Some things to note. The last four years are all the warmest on record. All six of the warmest years have happened since 2010. All 10 warmest years on record have been in the last 20 years. 18 of the warmest years on record have all been in the last 20 years. This gives pretty much a picture of global warming. Well, how fast have we been warming? Here's a plot of the decadal average temperature. So these are the annual temperatures averaged over a 10 year period from 1885 to the current time. If you look at the first 90 years of this plot, there's been, it was a relatively modest rate of warming throughout. And that, if you do the calculation, was 0.2 degrees centigrade in 90 years or 0 0.018 degrees centigrade per decade, which is a very low rate of warming. But in about 1970, the rate suddenly changed. If you fit a line to this, it comes out to be 0.75 degrees centigrade in 40 years 
or 0.19 degrees centigrade per decade, 10 times the rate that it was for the previous 90 years. So what happened to cause this sudden jump in uh, rate of warming? In the 1970s, lots of countries passed Clean Air Acts. Here's a picture of what London looked like in the 70s. I remember this well because I was actually at college then. And the smogs that we saw there are what's called aerosols and they generally cool the planet. So you had aerosols from basically from burning of coal and oil uh, mixing with the carbon dioxide produced by that same process causing a very slow rate of warming. But once those aerosols started to be removed the rate of warming uh, suddenly increased and corresponded to the rate of increase in carbon dioxide. So if you hear people espousing views that 2017 wasn't that warm or we're going into an ice age or the ice caps are uh, gaining ice, please post a link to this video. Until next time, goodbye.